Hello everyone, today's video is part 2 of a video series about the Step IR Urban Beam. I will show you the full step-by-step -step assembly of the antenna plus the installation at the end. If you missed part 1 of this video series, which is the unboxing and part checklist, you can click right here. If you want to be notified when part 3 is available, because this is going to be the full review of the antenna, the operation on the air, and the review of the controller SDA2000 called the Optimizer from Step IR, please subscribe now. Please note that the step-by-step -step in this video can differ slightly from the manual, and this video is not a replacement of the owner manual, but it sure will help you a lot building this antenna because it covers everything. If you own another step IR antenna, maybe some part of this video can be helpful. Once again, if you have any comment or question, go in the comment below. And in the meanwhile, I'll say 73 and enjoy this video. Before you start, remove any packaging from the EHUs, just like this. Then get the 10 foot four wire cable and remove at both ends about 1.5 inches of the outer jacket. Remove as well the aluminum foil on both ends. Don't cut the wire in half yet. Leave it like this will work on both ends. Remove the aluminum foil. Then you can remeasure and flatten the cable if needed. Remove about a quarter inch of the insulator on each wire and twist it like this. Don't put any soldering on it. Leave it like this. Okay. Then in both EHU there is a four pin connector that you're gonna use and the color code for the wiring is printed on the PC board. First just put a little bit of electrical tape around where we remove the outer jacket to make sure there won't be any short with the aluminum foil. This is very important. Open up the connector protector and put a little on your finger like this and go to all the wire. This should be done to all wire going outside, all the connection. And then insert the wire into the four pin connector using the correct color code. Make sure you are crimped on the wire, not on the insulator. This is very important, but as close as possible. Make sure it's tight evenly and that the connector is solid and secure just like this. And do that on both ends. I strongly recommend that you do a continuity test since the wire is not cut yet and make sure that your connection are all good. Insert the cable into the AHU like this and run it through the wire tray. You can put a little piece of electrical tape at the end to make sure the wire stay steady while you're working on it. Just like this. This is temporarily. Then cut three pieces of coaxial of one inches. You will need three per EHU. Then run it around the wire, just like this, at the inner end of the tray. This is going to seal the connection and push it firmly to make sure that it's completely sealed. But first, leave some loose on the connector, like I just did. And then you can complete the seal. You can remove the connector to go underneath to make sure it's sealed properly. Then reconnect the connector again. This is how it's look like. You will need to do that in the middle of the tray and at the other end of the tray, just like this. On the left, you have the director element EHU. On your right, you have the driven element EHU. The wheel is bigger because of the 30 and 40 meter rotating dipole. You have the balance DSO239 connector. And if you look in the tube, you will find the plastic stopper of the element. Before you install the EHU on the boom and the mounting plate, you will need to figure out where it goes. Have your driven element on your right and the director element on your left. As you can see, the tube are facing the outer of the boom, just like this. Okay, this will tell you how the plate goes on the boom. Then look for the aluminum saddle, which is 1.75 inches. The 2 inches saddle is used for the tower mask. Then align all your saddle like this. Figure out your mounting plate in the correct direction. Insert some bolts 
Inside of it, there's two length of boat, use the 3.5, not the 3.75, and put it on a flat surface like this. And open up the anti seize grease. This is important, put that on every boat that goes outside. Then you can tight, but not too much, because you will need to move it on the boom to do the final adjustment. Then make a mark right in the middle of the boom. You will need that later on. Now that the aluminum plate are mount on the boom, get the gasket of the, of the EHU and remove the extra rubber stuck in the hole. Make sure to align the hole on the aluminum plate just like this and make it sit correctly on both sides. This is very important that it sit perfectly. Then align your EHU on the aluminum plate on the gasket. Make sure not to move the gasket so it stay fit onto the aluminum plate. Insert some bolts and make sure to put some anti-seize grease on each bolt before you tight. You may have to lift it up like this to pursue the tightening. When you tight, make sure you tight in X and like this and make sure that the gasket is tight evenly all around. You may have to repeat this exercise to make sure that it is perfectly set. Now you can measure the center of the tube like this. Make sure you have 41.5 inches and now you can tighten it on the boom permanently. If you have the optional connector box, you will need to install it with the mass plate on the boom at the same time. So you do like this and make sure that you have the mark in the center of the boom and you can tight the plate but not too much because you will need to move it to level it. You will also need to rise the end of the boom if you want to have it stay still on a, uh, on a flat table like this because the mass plate will interfere. Use an angle like this with a level that was very helpful. Tight the mass on the boom. Now that everything is installed on the boom, you can cut in half the 10 feet wire that is used to connect the EHU and you, you will connect the other end into the connector box. Please note that in the connector box, you will need to connect five wire, not four, because you're going to keep the shield. That's why there is five pin on the connector. You need to skin the wire and put some connector protector as well. Tight it very well. Make sure it is solid and crimp on the wire. You can see that I leave some loose around the boom and did the loop for the rain. Put some tie wrap to hold it there. Then you have your connector. Since it's an urban beam with two elements, there's only two connector, two motor connected into the connector box. Make sure it is secure. Before I can test the motor, I need to prepare the control cable. At one end, I have the D sub, optional D sub connector. On the other end, I will use the large connector in the connector box. So you will need to strip around 2.75 inches of wire to do all the connection. This is a temporary connection to test the motor. Don't forget to put some connector protector for the large connector that's going to go outside into the connector box. You can do a continuity test to make sure your wiring is correct and then connect that into the box. We will now be able to connect the controller and do the motor test. Please do not play with wire while the controller is connected. Warning. Please refer to the manual and follow the correct procedure. Make sure you never modify the wiring when the controller is connected to the antenna, even if the power is disconnected. Never press a ban button when the fiberglass tube are not connected to the EHU. Failure to respect any of these advice could seriously damage the antenna. Now we will test the motor. Please do not press any ban button while 
the EHU are not connected to the fiberglass elements because this can damage the element. I'll do only a motor test that you will find into the menu and you can do a full test that means it's going to test both elements and you're going to see the plastic stopper get out on each side of the EHU like this. You can test the element independently and manually so you see the driven element is out if you look carefully at the end and then going to be in. Now we will test manually all element. You can do a full cycle or a manual test like this. Now it's out. Then we'll put it back in manually. There you go. And that's it. Extend all the telescoping pole to the max. Make sure it's very tight. You can snap it like this. Now you will need to cut the pole. So remove the plug at the end and measure 170 inches. You can use a tri wrap at the end to make sure you have the correct length and cut it with a pipe cutter. Do that on all four poles. Do the correct chamfer of each end like this. Use a shop vac to remove the dust inside the pole. Insert the shrink on all the joint of the telescoping pole and shrink it with a high temp gun. I have a 1500 watt. Make sure that it seal the, the, the joint correctly. Now let's cut the remnant pole to 41.5 inches. This is called cut two and cutting off material from the thicker end. Chamfer both ends of the remnant pole. Double check. Measure 1.70 inch from the tip and make a mark. From that mark at 1.70 inch, put 10 turns of electrical tape. Never pull too tight on the tape. Use some scissors to cut it. This will act as a stopper. Cut four inch of the silicone, blue silicone tape and wrap it clockwise flush to the electrical tape towards the tip. Like this. Then take the grip tape and put it at the end of the tip. Like this. Don't overlap. Prepare the tiniest end of the remnant pole like you just did on the telescopic pole. Don't overlap the grip tape. Cut the exceeding. Like this. Now install grip tape at one inch from the end on the other side of the remnant pole. Like this. When done, your pole should look like this. Some shrink looks better than the others. When you install the shrink, make sure that you put like two thirds of the shrink on the bigger side. This will do a better job, but as long as the joint is sealed. When preparing the sweet couplers, you put two together and make sure that the notch are on the same side on both on the top and the bottom and this notch will be facing the sweep tube like this on each side this is very important like this when you insert the bolt just put some anti seize on all of them like this when you insert the sweep tube onto the telescopic pole use something to put it higher and I use tie wrap to tie it to a bench then I can use can insert the the sweep tube and they're going their natural way down and I have the bolts facing upward and the step IR logo on each poles facing downward you can see how the electrical tape acts as a stopper for the sweep couplers
Now insert the two bolts in the middle of the sweep couplers. This is going to be needed to install the metal brace. You will need to put that on each end. That's how it looks like. Then you will need to pry it. Put your feet on one end, but don't use any shoes. Put it. Don't put too much weight on it. Just to hold it still while you getting it into it. Put some NTCs on each boat. And if you didn't tighten the sweet coupler is too tight, it will be easier to turn it and make a best fit. Insert the remnant pole into that end, just like this, until you stop at the electrical tape. You will need to shake the glue very well before you use it. And make sure that you use the glue only on the center pipe because you put the glue on the outside never inside so this will prevent the glue not to exceed inside the tube guide like this so the extra glue will stick outside not inside the tube when i assembled the antenna i made sure that the metal bracket will be facing up along with the bolt that will be facing up as well. And I made sure that the step IR logo on the telescopic tube will be facing down. So you see just like this. When joining the loop out together, make sure to put the hose clamp first. Use a screwdriver to prevent blocking the drain hole. Use some anti seize on the clamp. Make sure the middle hose clamp has the slot under the drain hole. This will act as a screen to prevent insects to come in, but still allow the water to get out. Now remove all caps that are on the telescopic pole. On the driven element side, on the right side, insert the PVC tube guide. Then you can insert the telescopic pole into the EHU driven element. To insert the other side, you will need a rope and you do this trick while stopping the telescopic tube on the top of the EHU. Then you can tighten the rope and attach it and this will make it easy to put it in this trick is mentioned into the manual and it works very very well make sure the poles are inserted all the way in don't worry if you still see the unpaint part as this will be hidden by the disconnect boot now put some anti seize on the old clamp as well you can remove the rope from this point you will need to do that on the other side as mentioned remove all caps of the pole insert on the other side the pvc tube guide for the driven element like this do the same trick to enter it when you remove the cap make sure that there's nothing left in the pole as you can see i was able to remove the middle of the cap so make sure there's none of that into the poles In the final adjustment, you may need to rotate a little the pole before you tighten the clamp, just to make sure that it is straight. This will level the end of the antenna. Make final adjustment to be certain that everything is straight and level. At the end, now you can tighten everything that has been left untightened and ready for the final installation. Now that the antenna is fully assembled, you can plug in the controller and you can test every band for standing wave. Please note that it is normal that the SWR will not be flattened on certain band because the antenna is not high enough. And this is tested on the ground. It's about three feet above the ground. So this is normal when you test the antenna that it won't be flat all the time. But at least you have a low standing wave point on each band that is reasonable. 
So this is the final test. And that's it, the antenna is ready to be installed.